died on, on April 20th. Um, my mother, Marilyn, uh, his wife of some 54 years, of course, wishes she was ready to be here with so many friends. And uh, hopefully we'll get her to come to the college in February for those that are, will attend that. And of course, on behalf of all my siblings as well, I'm the youngest um, and in many ways, probably the closest with my father since we're both psychiatrists. And um, so hopefully I uh, will have some of the firebrand and sweetness that he could somehow contain in one vessel and be a little troublemaker in a good way for the organization if, I, if, uh, if it will be that way. My father. Um, first off, we would really encourage everybody to please join the American Association for Social Psychiatry because psychiatrists have an obligation to do something more. My father was an idealist and he never let go of that. The, the, he would say there's no greater honor or privilege than to have the care of another human being in your hands to live that, to not just dream those dreams, but to live those dreams. And it makes a difference each time we have a patient encounter or on greater societal matters that will be disruptive to some vocal minority or even majority of our organized bodies of medicine, that what's right is right, and that we have a central role to advocate. And, um, so uh, soon after finishing residency, I, the first time I presented at the APA was about uh, the lack of mental health care for male-on-male -male rape uh, for prisoners on his encouragement. And, uh, or about the, and the other point was on um, the coercive treatment uh, in American drug courts, and just stating that it's, it's better than putting people into prison doesn't mean that psychiatry, that we should take ownership of patients uh, being compelled to accept treatment, that there's an ethical quandary there. Even if everybody wanted it, it's still, there's an abuse going on there. And these types of matters were important to him. On the issue of um, interrogation, I, I worked with him on, I think his last major paper, which was on physician involvement in interrogation. And he was stunned when I told him that I had to sign a confidentiality agreement for two years that uh, I was asked to consult on the administration of uh, psychotropic agents to uh, uh, detainees in Guantanamo. And I refused to provide any assistance. I was reminded that I have to keep confidential for a couple of years. But I was informed that would it be OK if I received a, a waiver from the Secretary of Defense uh, exempting me from my ethical obligations as a physician. And I said no. And he was stunned, of course, about that. Um, uh, it's more important to get something done, right? His motto, for sure, is one person can make all the difference in the world. And I'm spoiled by all of you and deeply moved that, uh, for my own grief, that I can be here with all of you. And please come up to me in the years to come. And I just know my father would be so proud uh, to, um, of this award. Um, so thank you all very much. And before we make, uh, make open for the uh, questions and answers, I want to make a couple